Hello and welcome to our news program, Proscars Daily from Hanoi. Here comes the headlines. Monument depicting Uncle Ho with ethnic people in the Central Highlands was inaugurated in Sa Lai Province. Donors pledged 6.5 billion U.S. dollars in official development assistance to Vietnam in 2013 at consultative group meeting in Hanoi. Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung received visiting Lao Deputy Prime Minister Ma Sang Lauli. A monument depicting Uncle Ho with ethnic people in the Central Highlands of Tây Nguyen was inaugurated on December 9th in the Highland Province of Chiang Mai. Party leader Nguyen Phu Chong attended the event. The monument comprises a 10.8-meter-high statue of President Ho Chi Minh standing tall, waving his right hand, which is the biggest bronze statue in Vietnam. It is put on a 4.5-meter throne on a 12-hectare square in the center of Pleiku City. Behind him is a circle of stone relief with scenes of daily life, production, and fighting activities of local people. Addressing the inaugural ceremony, Party General Secretary Chiang recalled the warm love that President Ho showed to ethnic people in the Central Highlands throughout his lifetime. At the same time, the people see him as their beloved father, who showed them the way to overcome all hardship to gain freedom, independence, and a happy life. The party leader expressed his belief that with their tradition of solidarity and self-reliance, Jalai and other Central Highlands provinces will follow the teaching of President Ho and the revolution path he has chosen towards the world of a strong country, rich people, and a democratic, equitable, and civilized society. The same day, a gong festival took place at the square with the performance of more than 2,000 artists, both professional and amateur. The meeting of the consultative group for Vietnam took place in Hanoi on December 10th. Donors have pledged almost 6.5 billion U.S. dollars in official development assistance to Vietnam in 2013. Themed "Laying the Foundation for Sustainable Growth," the event was co-chaired by Vietnamese Minister of Planning and Investment Bui Quang Vinh and World Bank Country Director in Vietnam Victoria Quoc Quoc. Minister Vinh said 2013 is a core year to implement the 2011 to 2015 socio-economic development plan, and is forecast to remain a tough year not only for Vietnam but donor countries also. He thanked the donors for their pledge of assistance and affirmed that ODA is still a crucial financial source for poverty reduction efforts in Vietnam. He said the country will continue to work closely with donors to step up the progress of projects and enhance the efficiency of the use of official development assistance. Addressing the event, Prime Minister Zung said Vietnam has seen a positive change in socio-economic performance, with this year's estimated GDP growth of 5.2 percent and inflation remaining at 7.5 percent. However, amid global economic turmoil, Vietnam is facing many challenges, including unsteady inflation control and macroeconomic performances, social welfare policy and programs to reduce poverty and create jobs. These challenges require the government to work hard to mobilize domestic and foreign resources to remove obstacles in the short term. On the other hand, the government must also prepare conditions for higher growth next year and create a foundation for sustainable development over the long term, Zung said. The prime minister said Vietnam will increase leadership efficiency in combination with reforming administrative procedures, clamping down on corruption and wastefulness, and maintaining political stability, social order, and safety. The meeting has discussed significant issues in the development of Vietnam, including high-quality human resource training and the management and use of land. World Bank Country Director Quoc Quoc said this is the last consultative group meeting for Vietnam. From next year, the meeting will be replaced by a Vietnam Development Partners Forum, co-chaired by the World Bank and the Ministry of Planning and Investment. The new forum marks a new step in the relationship between Vietnam and international donors, in the context that the country has become a middle-income country. 
Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung on December 10 received Lao Deputy Prime Minister A Sang Lao Li, who is on a working visit to Vietnam, to discuss measures to build a common border of stability and development between the two nations. At the meeting, Dung congratulated Laos for its successful organization of the Asia-Europe meeting and its official membership of the World Trade Organization. Zoom also praised the efforts and important contributions made by the two sides relevant agencies to build a common border of stability and development. For his part, Lao Li briefed Zoom on Laos's current situation and cooperation results between the Lao side and Vietnam Steering Committee for the Northwestern region. He said the party, state and government of Laos appreciate the cooperation between the two nations to build and develop the border region, adding that Laos will continue to coordinate with the Vietnamese side to overcome shortcomings and accomplish their joint border region targets. Earlier on December 9th, the Steering Committee for the Northwestern Region of Vietnam held a meeting in Hanoi to discuss measures to cooperate and build a border of stability and development between Vietnam and Laos. The third is a national conference on conservation agriculture in Southeast Asia opened in December 10 in Hanoi. The conference seeks measures to adopt emerging challenges in regional agricultural development. Themed Conservation, Agriculture and Sustainable Upland Livelihood, the event was jointly held by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and the Australian and French embassies in Vietnam. Participants at the conference agreed that Southeast Asia is a region that bears great pressure from populations and climate change. In a time when natural resources are diminishing, how to increase agricultural production and ensure food security are emerging regional challenges which require governments to seek appropriate measures. Experts said developing agriculture in combination with conserving biological diversity is a good choice for South East Asian countries. The Friday conference will analyze current challenges and propose measures to support agricultural development in mountainous and demanding areas. India is one of the leading countries in IT development. On the occasion of the 40th anniversary of Vietnam-India diplomatic ties, a conference was held in Hanoi on December 10 to discuss how to boost cooperation between the two countries in this field. The conference was jointly held by the Ministry of Information and Communications, the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and the Indian Embassy in Vietnam. The organizers hoped the event would be a chance for IT businesses of both countries to meet and establish links as well as find business partners. Over the past years, Vietnam and India have implemented several cooperative projects in the field. Just recently, India has had set up a human resources center with an investment of 2 million USD at the Hanoi Department of Information and Communications. In the future, India has a plan to assist Vietnam in establishing a supercomputer center at the Hanoi University of Technology. The National Civil Aviation Committee on December 9th staged the national exercise stimulating an illegal intrusions into civil aviation activities at the Linh Khương Airport in Đức Trọng District, Lâm Đồng Province. Deputy Prime Minister Hoàng Trung Hải said the exercise aimed to enhance coordination among forces and units involved in civil aviation safety, saying that good preparedness will help mitigate the loss of lives and damage to property during any incidents. The event involved more than 1,000 people from the Special Task Police Force, from the Ministry of Public Security, the Air and Defense Force, Military Joint 7, and relevant local forces. The drill simulated actions responding to public disturbance and riots, attacking and arresting terrorists, rescuing hostages from the terminal, aircraft, and the command tower, detecting bombs, clearing toxic chemicals, and fighting fire. 
Apart from improving skills in combat command and coordination, the exercise aims to raise the vigilance of forces to ensure civil aviation safety, improve their rescue capability, and operations to cope with terrorism and high trackings. That comes to the end of our program. For now, from me and the rest of the team, we thank you always for being with us, and please tune in the program throughout the week for more updated news. Thank <laughs> you.